96B. I'm gonna um, go away so I can eat, but I'll listen. <laughs> okay, Nancy. just turn your volume way up. <laughs> oh, no, down so we don't so hear you. You can hear us. <laughs> All right, folks. You can also so... off your video and eat, eat, and, you know, eat at the meeting. <laughs> there she goes. <laughs> No one needs to be ashamed of eating on video, but if you prefer to eat off video, that's fine. <laughs> um, we're, we're all understanding of normal bodily habits here. We all need to eat and drink and do the things we need to do. So um, thank you to everyone we for drinking together during these meetings. Yeah. yeah I usually cool. save most of my drinking for after the meeting, but. <laughs> David, when, can we consider a different date for these meetings? Friday at this time is really awkward. We, I'd be happy to consider another date and time. I think we did consider a lot of dates and times. And I think we ended up at this time because lots of people, a few people didn't like it. I don't think anybody liked it. Um, but every other date and time we considered, there were people yeah. who felt it was important to be there and they had some other commitment. Now, I, yeah. I have Maybe heard- Maybe it was before, it was day, before daylight savings time and before, you know, it got warm. And so maybe, maybe we could do another doodle just to see if people's yeah. habits have changed now in the summer. Yeah. I would, and, and also I would as COVID love. fades, I will find all right, my Fridays all occupied. Okay, yeah. so it's not good for you anymore, Ted. Well, not yet, but I can see it coming. Okay, all right. Yeah, I would prefer another date too. Yeah, I think I think everyone would. <laughs> that was kind of what we were up against. I'll, I'll, I'll even go to a weekend. Fine. That's how important it is. <laughs> Do you have a suggestion, Olivia, as to a, a day or a time? Thursdays are better. Um, most, you know, weeknights, I, you know, are, are fine. Um, just Fridays for me. The problem is that the town has a lot of weeknight meetings already. Yeah, I, I can see the challenge. Yeah, I, I definitely think that there is the possibility to find an, another useful time and especially um, giving consideration to people who are in or have a, a stake in the hamlet, I think is important to, to making it work. And I, I do hear that more people are gonna be less interested in Friday nights as Friday nights get nicer and there's more places that you can go. I think we're all <laughs> excited about um, going to the places we used to like to go to when we could go to places. Um, and since that will be coming back soon, I, I think everyone is a little conscious of that. So thanks for bringing that up, Olivia. And I will share another um, doodle poll where we can see if there's another time. I would like to keep it the same time, you know, for, for several months when I first started, we did a poll for each meeting yeah. and that was real rough, um, both on me, just cause I have a lot of other things to do to coordinate. Lots of polls was difficult. And also I think it's difficult for the community to keep track of something that's not regular. So I liked that we were able to set something that we could say it's gonna be this day and time forever. Um, but I do understand that it's Friday night. Also, I mean, do we need a full two hours? I don't think that longer meetings are necessarily more productive. Um, and I think we can be. I would also prefer to see maybe, um, you know, an hour meeting possibly. Yeah. I appreciate that feedback and agree. And um, Yeah, actually on, on that point, um, I saw Nancy's email today. Um, which more or less suggested that we should we should make a uh, strong attempt not to let one or one or a few voices uh, monopolize a large part of the discussion. And I think that's 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 valid. I mean, you know, we don't need a time limit, but people shouldn't continue going for ten minutes at a time. Um, so I didn't see anything from Nancy. Did, Nancy, did you send an email around? It, it, no, she basically it was it was limited distribution. Oh, okay. Well, Sorry, I just sent it to David, Joel, and uh, I copied Ted on it because we've been talking about a couple of things. But mostly, um, I wanted to see kind of more of like what the goals are. And you guys already may know this because you're working, been working on the committee 
longer, the meeting has been going on, but what are the goals and, you know, what, are, what timeline I get, I don't know. I, I, I have to apologize though, because I just saw there's a whole bunch of information about some stuff on the Hamlet website yeah. that I didn't have a chance to read. And I wanted to say, I'm really excited to see that $30,000 grant. That's the, uh, you want to talk about that? I thought that was just $10,000. Uh, no, we just found out today that we won an additional thirty thousand yeah. dollars to put towards. Oh, when did we apply for that? Uh, months ago, shortly yeah. after I started. Um, Fantastic. Yeah, so we developed a relationship, David. That would thank you for doing that. Yeah, I think it's. Yeah. I think it's going to be good. Um, you know, ten thousand dollars is what we had from the county. It really wasn't enough. Um, we knew it wasn't enough. The consultant knew it wasn't enough. We had a really hard time coming to uh, agreement on a scope that did anything worthwhile with that budget. Um, and so they actually helped us for free um, to complete that application for the additional funding. Um, and it's, I think it's going to make that um, project of studying ways that um, we can have more septic um, shared septic possibilities, offsite septic, um, septic systems that a developer could set up um, that would serve multiple parcels that could be turned over to the town and managed as a district. Um, that's really the way that we can have the capacity to do the level of development and the scale of development. Having buildings close together, you need some kind of infrastructure other than one septic system for each building. Um, so, you know, I think that's really a, a key part of this. Um, there are some other key parts, you know, uh, I think one thing that would be useful, I had a little chat with Joel about this today, is um, to kind of understand the bounds of what we're working on here, because sometimes conversations get uh, swayed away from zoning. And zoning is one of the tools in our toolbox that we have for achieving the goals that we want in the Hamlet. Um, and Nancy, I, I know that you asked about goals and I'd be happy to share with you a previous presentation that excerpts things from the comp plan. Um, but I think I can say in one sentence, the overarching planning goal uh, that's been directed to me on behalf of the town is that we want to make it easier to develop in the Hamlet, harder to develop outside of the Hamlet. The Hamlets are where development should happen. We don't wanna see sprawl all over the rest of the town. Um, and you know, there's, there's more to it, there's more nuance, there's more about what kind of development we wanna see and how it should be organized, but that's the overarching um, goal. Um, and the lens through which I hope we can look at um, analyzing whether or not a zoning proposal is helpful for meeting that goal. Um, we are at the point in this process uh, where we are working on the actual parameters of the zones and a map of the zones. We've kind of decided what the zones are. And the next step this month and next month is to work out a passable draft of what the rules for development for achieving um, the goals we have in those different zones um, is. And I shared with all of you before the meeting uh, the text uh, draft of, of those zones and also a map. And I thought that we could start today uh, by looking at the map and discussing it. Um, one thing that I, I want to preface everything with is this is an iterative process. Uh, we started with a rough draft. It's not all correct. There are things that need to be adjusted. Um, you know, this, there's limited time to work on it and it's purposefully and sketchy. It but this is um, and the, right. the purpose of this process is to go from something rough to something that we um, can mostly support. Um, so to that end, I'm going to start, start sharing my screen uh, with the map and we can walk through some of the parameters that I hope we can address and discuss in this group. 
quick, David, is this the same map you sent out a couple of weeks ago or a different map? Because I didn't get that email, I don't think. Um, so or does it matter because we're going to talk about it anyway? I'm going to talk about it. We're going to look at it. It's All right. There have been now two, uh, two versions of it shared. Let me see here. Uh, we shared a version before the last um, conservation group meeting. And uh, in that meeting, there were th things that made sense to change. Uh, I made most of those changes, not all of them. Um, we, have, we have things to discuss tonight uh, with this group that, you know, that group um, thought were important to look at and we can decide with this group how we're gonna change it. Um, but before I get into that, I do, I, there was some conversation before the meeting started um, and I, I just want to address a couple things. So the first part, um, this was a comment from Rhonda and I've, there's some other comments that have noted that there are some kind of seemingly random zone assignments here. Um, I think Rhonda's specific question was, what's up with this? Why is this this way? Um, and what I would encourage you to do is to look at the map and find things like this and we can discuss it. This isn't um, a proposal that has had significant thought about why this lot should be pink. Uh, the lots were colored pink by an equation that looked at lot size um, and you know several other parameters that spit something out and I went through and made adjustments around the town and then figured we're gonna look at things. We're gonna find mistakes. We're gonna make changes um, together as a group. So nobody needs to you know, get upset or worried or um, concerned about things that seem like they're not right. We're here as a group to look at things and say, well, that doesn't seem right. That should be a different zone and we can discuss it and decide together how things should change. Um, so an introduction to the, the map overall. I'm gonna click to the, the screen. So we have uh, a set of zones that we've settled on. Um, around the town, there is, is existing planned development zones. Um, these are kind of areas where the town board sets specific zoning for a specific development. So each of those is different, it has different rules. Um, and the town's current zoning allows someone to apply for that special treatment anywhere in the town and they go through a process with the town board. So things that have been uh, designated plan development are colored purple. Um, the list uh, as was requested by Ted in the last meeting goes from least restrictive to most restrictive. Um, so the, most, the least restrictive zone that we are currently looking at is the Hamlet core. This is the middle of the two hamlets. It's where you really wanna encourage commercial development, lo small local businesses to um, locate there. We want people to build. We want it to be as easy as possible to build. We want someone to say, I wanna build somewhere in the town of Danby, where will it be the easiest? And to look at that zone first, because that's where uh, all of the town's plans and policies point the most uh, desire to have development. Um, the next, one is the Hamlet neighborhood. Um, this is the area around the core. It fills out the rest of the Hamlet. Uh, we also want to be directing development here. So it's designed to be easy to do infill there to create new lots for housing. There's a little bit more limited commercial allowed, but it's mostly residential neighborhood designed around you know, the way we've been building neighborhoods for thousands of years, small lots close together, um, places that you can trick or treat, places that kids can walk on a street or ride a bike between friends' houses, those kinds of things. Uh, the next um, step up in restrictions is um, one that I have proposed, which is a suburban character or neighborhood zone. Uh, this is mostly places that were built out under the current zoning. Uh, so it's lots. Uh, the current zoning limits the lowest size you can have of a lot is two acres within the suburban character zone. It's kind of clusters around town that have lots between mostly um, 10 and two acres. There are certainly some smaller ones 
Um, but I, I looked around the town and said, where are there these significant clusters? And at first, when we looked at them, we tried not to include parcels that were in um, county ag districts. We've added in some. Um, and I've also removed some clusters uh, because there was definitely concern early on that there was too much of the town in that zone. Um, but what we've talked about there is mostly keeping the existing rules. There are some folks who are saying, I don't want any of that in the town. Um, that is part of the conservation working groups uh, task, and that's where that conversation belongs. But I, I want to make sure that everyone understands the full picture here. Uh, the next um, most restrictive zone after suburban character is rural character. Um, here we talked about significantly increasing the minimum lot size, um, having some process for transferring development rights between parcels, having uh, allowing and incentivizing cluster development, um, definitely trying to get a lot less development potential than is currently allowed, um, but trying to, when we can, have the development that does happen kind of clustered together. Um, above that, more restrictive areas that have some steeper slopes that might have forests, um, that have some natural features that we want to add additional preservation protection to is the rural character one zone. Um, like the rural character two, we're looking at significantly larger lots than are currently um, set as the minimum um, and also adding site plan review requirements for all new buildings, um, which is a big step because right now most building does not require site plan review. And then finally, the most restrictive is the high priority preservation zone. Um, this is mostly the Danby State Forest um, land owned by the Finger Lakes Land Trust, land owned by the town. Um, we talked about having a very high minimum lot size for this, at, at least 25 acres, um, and not imposing that on landowners who don't want it, um, but having it be possible that if you want to put your land in this zone, if you, that's a priority to you, you can um, request that the town zone your land that way. Um, Rhonda has suggested that. We put her less than two acre parcel in there um, at her request. Um, and anyone else who would like to have their land go in that zone um, can request to do so. Um, but now I want to zoom up on the map to the hamlets, right? So we're looking at two hamlets. This is West Danby. This is Central Danby. Um, you'll notice that for each of them, there is a darker orange core and a lighter orange for the neighborhood. Um, I'd like us to spend some time delineating the edges of these. The feedback that we got at the last conservation working group meeting was that um, what I've done here, which is take uh, the previous kind of definitions of the shape of the hamlet and apply them to full parcels, uh, wasn't working for everybody. So um, there was a suggestion, for example, that this parcel and this parcel shouldn't all be in the hamlet neighborhood that we can divide the parcel and have some of it be in the Hamlet neighborhood and have some of it not be in the Hamlet neighborhood. Um, there's other places in town that have kind of long thin parcels where there's some discussion of not all of the parcels should be in the zone that the street frontage is in. Um, so I hope we can do that today. Uh, and I, I also hope we can look at the, the core areas. Um, and in particular, I have some comments from Joel about the core area and the extent of the Hamlet neighborhood in the West Danby Hamlet. Before we jump into zooming in on parcels there, does anyone have questions about what I've said so far? I see Nancy has her hand up. You yeah, are muted, you. Nancy. I, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to take it down. I'm so sorry. <laughs> That's okay, I'm gonna lower it for you. All right. You know me, I just based, I started just basing out on what you were saying. Thank you. <laughs> One thing I think would be helpful, David, before we get into the specifics is, is for you to reiterate the difference between the dark orange and light orange and the hatched in terms of the, of the uh, degree of uh, restriction, mm -hmm. um, because it was illuminating for me uh, to, to discover how, where the differences lie so, so, because mm -hmm. um, it, it it affects how you feel about whether 
things been going in dark orange or white or, or hatched. Sure. Um, and before I jump into that, though, I saw that Ted had a question. And Ted, if you want to ask that while I pull up that other document. Um, sure. Uh, I, uh, before the meeting started, I was sort of asking a question, uh, a concern about juxtaposing um, zones that are of widely differing character next to each other. Now, in some cases, you just can't avoid that because there is an existing group of two acre parcels with houses on them. So it's, it's suburban, you can't change that. But ideally, you would not want to impose unnecessarily, a, say a suburban area right next to a high preservation area. And similarly, you would obviously would not want to uh, impose a, uh, high, a hamlet core next to say something that was a light green or a uh, the, either the um, uh, the one or two categories, the rural one or two, you'd probably want to avoid that where possible, unless it's necessary. Um, um, just as a, as a general concept. And the example that I pulled up, uh, just at random, I'm, I'm looking at it on, on my screen right now, but uh, on South Danby Road, you have a bunch of pink areas right next to dark green. Now, some of them are clearly not negotiable. For example, the southern grouping, I think that's where you are, Rhonda, is that right? No, actually, I'm further I'm south. Listening. Okay, the, there's a southern grouping, I don't know what to call it, it's sort of a vertical grouping along South Danby Road. That one's not negotiable because they already exist. Um, right. On the other hand, somewhat higher, uh, the fur, there are two parcels on either side of South Danby Road, which not only abut the green, that's the dark green, that's, you can't avoid that, but I'm wondering whether you should, you should have something that's suburban abutting a light green. Well, I can tell you what that little section is. That's the old hamlet of South Danby and includes the house that is on the property of the old general store, the church, and the school. Are, are you talking about that vertical stretch? No, I'm talking for just further south. There, that's um, the old hamlet of yeah, South Danby. Yeah, the vertical Danby. stretch, yeah. And yeah. so the houses are close together there. But that doesn't mean that I the, that they have small parcels. But that doesn't mean that I feel that that should be uh, that that type of suburban atmosphere should be encouraged. And I don't think any of those people would think that either. Right. Well, in there, in that particular case, you might say, and David, you you have the data in front of you. You might say, you know, those parcels aren't going to be divisible anyway. So there's, there'd be little lost from the point of view of the homeowners, the property owners, to classify them as light green instead of pink, possibly. Ted, do you see any of those issues showing up in either of the hamlets, which is what we want to focus on? Well, yeah, that's that's why I was kind of, before, before David started me off, I was going to kind of leave it for the moment. In the hamlet, the only area that I, I look at and I say, I don't know about that, are those very large properties to the west of the central hamlet, uh, Russ Nitchman, hi Russ, and Kim, and uh, Bob Rose. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was, I mentioned them at during the conservation meeting as being candidates for maybe dividing, putting them into two zones, you know, the western zone is more of a rural character, whereas the eastern part is is more of a hamlet carrier character, perhaps. Uh, of course, since then, there's been the solar farm proposal, which sort of takes care of one of them. So I do think that this is an important concept to address. Um, so thank you for bringing that up, Ted. And it is something that I hear a lot. Um, don't we need a transition between one zone, a more intense zone and a significantly less intense zone? Doesn't that make sense? Doesn't, don't we, isn't it better if you have, um, you know, dense, medium dense, a little less dense and then not dense. And um, I would argue uh, that that's actually the opposite of what you want. 
I, I think that the ideal situation would be if you could put most of the development in a Hamlet core and have conservation right outside of that and have a hard edge. You have a Hamlet and then you have open space um, that's protected. And I think that that is a really good relationship to have. Um, and I don't think that you actually want um, to add a bunch of kind of less protected space between the Hamlet and um, the more restrictive zone uh, if you don't need to. Um, so I would encourage people not to feel like you can't go from the most dense zone to the least dense zone. Um, and I think that actually that creates a, a really nice uh, situation where you have people in a walkable neighborhood who can then walk to a natural space. Um, and I think that it's a, this transect right here is a good example of that, of having mm -hmm the pond so close to um, the Hamlet Center, um, you want to have that kind of relationship where you can have really good habitat and, you know, trails and um, natural space as close as possible to the denser parts of the community mm -hmm. would be my suggestion. It's kind of like an urban park. That, that makes a lot of sense. You know, the one thing that um, I don't like about saying those houses on South Danby Road should not be purple. They are purple. There's, it's high density. It's purple. I mean, I, I understand Rhonda wanting hers to be in the dark green, but she doesn't have 25 acres. I don't see how it really can be if it's a, a lot. And then we were looking up along Steam Mill, you have stuff in the purple um, pink. Which, or pink, the pink, whatever. I am seeing it's purple, the higher density um, suburban stuff. But then on Durfee Hill Road, you have as many lots and are even smaller lots that are in the um, green. The, the green dots or something. One, one of those other things. One of the and, and it, it just if if Steam Mill is in that suburban color, then Durfee Hill should be in the same. It just it doesn't make sense to me. So I mean, that's a computer program doing it. <clears throat> but um, I, that, that's just an area that I saw that I think needs to be tweaked. Yeah, I see us, uh, you know, quibbling about the pink, um, and I'm not sure it's a worthwhile, uh, you know, discussion to have. Really, to, well, it's definitely not a worthwhile discussion to have in the Hamlet Group meeting. So yeah, we right, it's sort of back off. on the Hamlet Group. Yeah, right. right. So let let's put it off for the group. It's really talking about the bigger picture. Yeah. So 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 David, the uh, the uh, I. I completely concur with your judgment about having like a solid edge rather than a low medium high which we had for a while uh, the, uh, the walking distance to the core suggests a certain radius doesn't it it does um, which is generally considered to be about a quarter mile so um, how much of those long lots would be included if you did that let's see. Hmm. There's not a scale on the uh, drawing, is there? So a quarter mile is 1,320 feet, which is approximately that far. Wait. Can you see my cursor? Yeah. Yeah. In other words, so, it doesn't even make it to to the to that east, western lot. Right, and that's drawn from the intersection of Bald Hill and mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So that that's oh, that, oh excuse that's me, can you blow that up a little bit. So that's what a quarter mile looks like. So a, a quarter mile radius is what planners for walkable neighborhoods use as the distance to create an entire neighborhood. Um, I think that when we get in this much more rural context, that sense of scale is really difficult for people to understand. And that's why we've spent some time, you know, talking about the amount of area that we dedicate to the different uses. Um, we don't need to be wedded to that. And um, I think that most of the planning for the Hamlet has actually been focused more on a half mile mm -hmm. uh, radius, which gets you to 
what is that? Uh, I mean, if you look at Jenny's Pond, it's more than a quarter mile from those houses that use it. And if you look at the, the downtown Danby area, um, it's greater than a quarter mile in length and size. So I, I do think you have to increase that scale. Maybe I think, you know, in the city, people walk around the block, so to speak, and that's probably at least half a mile. No, it's not. Um, but so a half mile is the distance from um, the core to Jennings Pond. Yeah, but that's, that's a workable distance, especially if there's a, you know, uh, bicycle trail to get you from A to B. Mm -hmm. And you're not mm -hmm. entirely walking it. Right. Um, David, I'm going back to Ted's point a little bit about adjacent um, zoning areas. I mean, we have the two bright orange and the hamlet, and then the sort of the neighborhood section um, along 96B. I mean, I wasn't at the last meeting, so I don't know why it was decided not just to make that all orange from Gunderman down to Bald Hill, um, because I could see potentially if you now have, um, you know, commercial operations along the highway, and then you have these, you know, particularly just along the highway, the light orange, how that might impact those, you know, people who own properties there. They might find it, you know, either noisy or too light, or it would somehow to me make sense just to make that entire corridor from Gunderman to Bald Hill all orange. So we did have some conversations about that and okay. about the capacity, the realistic capacity of the hamlet to support commercial uses. Um, a hamlet of this scale, even with twice the number of houses we have now, can support approximately one intersection of built out commercial. Um, you need hundreds and hundreds of people to support, you know, uh, even a half block long type main street of commercial businesses. So um, the, the reason of having only a few parcels that have the Hamlet core zoning is that that's really where um, the develop the commercial development wants to be focused and I, I think it's a good point to talk about um, what Joel mentioned the difference between these two zones um, and I'm going to spend a minute doing that both of the zones as proposed now have no minimum lot size they make it very easy to add residential density in one to four unit buildings um, it's by right someone can subdivide um, and get a building permit to add a house in both of the zones. It's the same density allowed. Um, the difference is that in the darker orange, you can also do very small commercial buildings by right, meaning um, you apply for a building permit, it gets reviewed and you can build it. That's under 2000 square feet. You can build commercial up to 6,000 square feet with review by the planning board. So 6,000 square feet is significantly smaller than what a chain retailer like a um, CVS would want. Those are generally eight to 12, up to 15,000 square feet. 6,000 mm -hmm. square feet keeps it in the range of more locally focused businesses, um, but it is, a significant size that you can run a uh, successful business in 6,000 square feet. Um, so we've made an option for not requiring that. You can start really small with a very small building. Um, and then if you're gonna have a building that has more impact, there is the ability to do a larger building. In the lighter orange zone, um, there's no commercial allowed without site plan review. And there is some commercial allowed on corners um, with a reduced size. So the intent is to keep the lighter orange more residentially focused. We need a lot more homes to be able to support businesses in the darker orange areas. Um, and we did talk about how even just half of the bottom dark orange area 
um, is as much street width as the downtown of the village of Groton's downtown. Um, it probably won't be developed as intensely as that with three story buildings that have that are built right up against each other, but it's worth understanding the scale that basically from that corner to the edge of the park is all of downtown Groton or all of downtown Dryden. Um, that is how much room there is there. And I think it, it's easy to think, oh, well, right now it's three houses. It's just three houses. We don't have enough room for business there. There's plenty of room if it's developed at a greater intensity um, rather than sprawling all over the place. So that's why um, you, you don't want to get, if you make all of this area orange, or some people even said, well, why don't we just make you know, the entire 96 corridor orange. We can have commercial all along there and you could, but it would be so spread out that you would only, it would not be a walkable environment. It would be entirely a drive to environment. You would drive from the, a business here to a business here. There's no one who's ever gonna walk this corridor um, or not that no one will. There's people who, I just saw someone who's on our planning board walk from Old Town Village to the Hamlet this morning, um, but it's not going to be a common thing. It's not pleasant. It's not within um, the realm of what is people are going to do on a frequent basis. But David, you keep bringing up Dryden. And first of all, Dryden in the heart of Dryden, the village where there's a sidewalk, has absolutely nothing of any significance. Uh, in fact, even that restaurant on the corner, I've been in it, and it's not anything that attracts much attention. And what has happened is that Dryden has spread out so that you have a Walgreens and a, a bunch of other stores, including the grocery store and everything, are on the outside of the hamlet. And we, unfortunately for us, we have spaces that are currently open on the outsides of the hamlet. And I, I really wouldn't like seeing a Walgreens and a grocery store and a John Deere tractor and a gas station and all kinds of other things on those outsides. So well, that's great because that is not allowed in any of the zones that are outside there. there we are only allowing small commercial in the hamlet and there is no provision so far for commercial outside of the hamlet so that is it could, not could you mind taking a look david at newfield because newfield's perhaps more is comparable in size and it has a real downtown mm -hmm. um, how much space that takes i mean the other thing that we have to take into consideration is i mean we're looking at an ideal and that's assuming that those landowners in those orange zones are really interested in doing something of you know higher density or commercial you know if there are only one or two you know property owners who want to do uh -huh. something you know then we're we're nothing much is, is we're not going to have much momentum which is why i would suggest increasing the corridor so that there is more room for entrepreneurship or innovation right now is we're relying on a handful of, of property owners to do something we already see you know with the, the land that's right next to the town hall that's been recently purchased that might you know i don't know i haven't had an update from david but that might turn into some kind of a modular home and and that's it you know and that that's one key piece of property then that will never get developed and you know so that's my concern is that we're by making it so restrictive we're ex, you know have this expectation that these landowners are going to be able and want to do something with their land now i know that i would like to do something but you know i don't know how other people in that orange zone feel what they're going to do with their properties well, let's think of zoning someone was trying to chime in with something oh i think maybe uh, catherine perhaps first she, I, she hasn't I, talked yet all Go I ahead, wanted, catherine. okay all i wanted to say is that remember this isn't just about the next five or ten years this is a plan that's supposed to be 
in in a longer plan so that as things change they could new owners or it could change and it would be permissible because of it or it would be encouraged that's all i wanted to say mm. thanks Kathy. and that's a, a very good point that this is really setting the table for 20 30 years um and you know there really isn't a big market for commercial development right now so if we were going to get two commercial enterprises you really want them to be right next to each other you don't want them to be a mile apart Ted? That, that that was really all those points are related to my question when you describe the permitted uses within the uh, dense hamlet area um you, you it looks i think you were saying that by right you could have up to two thousand feet with up to six thousand feet permitted with after review after review mm -hmm. is that correct that's correct and i'm willing to to go on a limb and say that that means that six thousand is okay because the review is simply checking boxes uh if you meet these criteria you get it but you were saying that um somebody like a, a dollar general wouldn't want something as small as six thousand feet and you were further saying that well there's no place else that permits it so is a place like a dollar general therefore basically prohibited uh, they would have the option of applying for a plan development zone with the town board um, or applying for a variance um, but yeah the town could say no right well that would be a use variance right or is that an area variance it'd be an area variance so it it is not uh, use variances are much harder to obtain mm -hmm. so, so what, uh, joel asked me to look at newfield mm -hmm. um, this is the downtown of newfield i think interpreted fairly broadly stretch out um 748 feet 750 feet um, so if we compare that to Central Hamlet. This. So just this, this orange on the side of the street is already longer than that downtown of Newfield. But there is, there is one difference, of course, that in Newfield or Dryden for that matter, when you exit what you'd call the downtown hundred few the few hundred feet of downtown you still remain within a fairly dense densely um populated zone whereas in our case it drops off to nothing real quick well it does now but the zoning that's around here this this zoning would allow the kind of development that you have in that area that's on the sides of the downtown in newfield or dryden long term yeah right uh, one one of the things i mentioned in the conversation uh -oh. this afternoon was how do we how do we keep sorry about that uh, how do we keep this area from being be, from being tied up so to speak in the in the interim by somebody buying a, a chunk and, and 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 just seeing it as their place in the country and 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 plopping a house in the middle of of five acres and and then you you you've, you've kind of throttled the potential for for <coughs> denser development it, it, is it is it reasonable to entertain you know in not just no no minimum lot size but having some sort of maximum if you're subdividing so they can't be divided into big chunks i think that is reasonable i think the difficulty that we face now, which is why we're doing the study we talked about earlier, is that there's no infrastructure. So right. it's, you really can't do a lot any smaller than an acre and a half now. Um, I have worked in places that had maximum lot sizes for subdivisions and also maximum lot widths, which is actually more important for creating um, creating the street. It's really about the street that you create. So mm -hmm. does these parcels create the same street as this parcel? Yeah. Um, it's about the frequency of buildings along the street, not the lot size. Having a deep lot doesn't change the feeling along the street. So have so, you, um, have, so what do you propose then for the frontages 
Is there, well, is there so far? I there is no requirement. It, okay. it could go either way. Um, the current proposal is basically stepping out of the way, um, and then we can have a discussion about what rules are necessary um, to prevent things we don't want. But right now, uh, we said we want the hamlet to be the easiest place in the town to build. So um, we it took out as many restrictions as possible. So are we going to put a covered bridge on Gunderman Road there? <laughs> so I think this is a very important point, Rhonda. Um, what we're talking about now is the zoning. The zoning sets the table for what people can do on their private property. After we have some functional zoning in place, we can talk about a capital improvement plan. We can talk about what the town can do to incentivize people to use the zoning. We can talk about things that the town could do to use the zoning. Um, but the zoning is setting the table for what development is possible. So it's not about having sidewalks. It's not about bridges. It's not about infrastructure. It's not about um, changing anything because this isn't about the town making changes. This is about the town setting the table for what it allows private property owners to do to meet the town's goals. But you said uh, you wanted to make it the easiest place in town to do things, but you had restrictions on roof types and number of windows and all sorts of prescriptive things that have nothing to do with that. And I, you know, you're talking about turning it into a downtown, a walkable downtown is a, is a pipe dream. You don't have any sidewalk and they're never gonna have any sidewalks. You have uh, buildings within 10 feet of the road. So you're not gonna put sidewalks in there. I don't see that uh, a walkable downtown, turning it into Dryden isn't gonna happen. And so from my point of view, if somebody wants to put a burned dairy gas station in there, we should let them do that. Um. So I, I or will- Or Dollar General or anything else that they want to put in the middle of the town. Because um, right now there's the church and the, the fire station and auto repair and, uh, and the town. Oh. Um, there really isn't any room in the um, that core area to put in, I mean, like the 6,000 square feet that's bigger than a basketball, a professional basketball court. I'm just even wondering where, I mean, which lot size would be even big enough to entertain that kind of a-, a You'd have to consolidate structure. lot sizes if you wanted to do that, but- um. So I'm just thinking the 6,000 just seems, you know, on the high side, that's all. Because it would then, just because of the dimension, it would dwarf, you know, the scale of the other buildings. I mean, all of our buildings are, oh, what probably, you know, with two really? floors together, 2,500 square feet or something like that. Now, if you think of some kind of a building that is, you know, um, running along but the side of the road that's that large, it would just somehow it wouldn't be scale appropriate for the hamlet. David, could you impose a, uh, you know, a, a 60 by 100 rectangle over there so we can see what it actually looks like? So 100 feet is this long. Mm -hmm. 60 feet is that long. So this would be a 6,000 square foot footprint. So it is on, doable on Olivia's yeah, parcel. It's much smaller than I thought. Yeah, well, I, I would hope though that if we were going to be building buildings, we might have some sort of, I don't know if it's part of zoning or not, but some sort of ambiance so that we had a little bit, uh, we didn't have a big mishmash of buildings and we had more of a, an atmosphere like you have in Aurora or something like that, um, that would make people want to stop and, you know, you know, sort of attract people to, to a store rather than every store looking different and some being modern and some being not modern and that whole thing. Well, we do have so, design guidelines for the commercial building. So that was a good step in the right direction. 
we do. So there's there's two things there, and I, this gets back to um, the point the gentleman mentioned earlier, um, and I'll I'll tie in Rhonda's comment. Um, there are so I I said that this releases most of the controls that are currently in zoning. There's no minimum lot size. There's no required frontage. There's no maximum density. Um, but in exchange for that, and there's options for buildings that don't require going to the planning board through a three month site plan review process. In exchange for that, there are some very simple rules about how you make a building friendly to people on the street. And that has to do with having windows in the front, um, having uh, uh, pitch roofs or having detailed architectural entries. It's just a few things that are check boxes that you have to check off instead of just building a metal pole barn and being allowed to do that with no review. So it's a balance between um, the current process, which is if you wanna do most anything, you have to come before the planning board um, it takes months, it costs hundreds, if not thousands of dollars. Um, you have uh, a group of kind of lay people reviewing your proposal and your neighbors talking about it and things like that. Uh, we can replace that with a few things that you have that definitely make a difference and make things better that you have to do. And they're all things that you can either say, yes, that's there or no, it's not there. Rather than saying, you know, is this a style that so-and-so likes does is this the favorite color of the person who's the chair of that committee you know i've i've been in planning board meetings with someone who really loves red trees and every development has to have a red tree and you know red trees are awesome but it's not really fair to inflict your favorites on you know everyone who comes through the process so um, i think it's important that we find that balance of having some rules that keep things decent but not being overly restrictive um, because we do want people to come and build here. Here's hey, a concern. Is Kelly. Oh, sorry, oh. go ahead, Joel. I was gonna say, maybe I should just let you speak. My, 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 my concern was that if you, if you don't have any frontage requirement, which I think is probably a good idea, uh, and you don't have minimum lot size, which I also think is a good idea, what uh, keeps it from being uh, built out as, um, a bunch of flag lots. Nothing. Well, why would you need the flag lot if there's no minimum lot size? Well, because the depth is more than, I mean, the, the, the street is there, but we're, we're not providing for any additional streets. So in order well, to you're... access the back, you would be putting, you know, so uh, yeah, I got it. I got it. I was I was thinking of long, narrow flag lots, whereas in fact you're talking about literal, literal tiny, flag lots. tiny flag poles, bigger flags. Right. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's fine. I see it. Well, what we have now, looking at this orange that's on display, we have all of these structures, and and some of the lots even have two structures, and. So we don't have anything that's linear along the road. It's it, a lot of the stuff is back from the road. Uh, some of it is significantly back from the road. It really looks like a mishmash to me. And I, you know, short of having people take down some of their structures, I don't see how we're going to really create a. Yeah. A village, a standard village where you're thinking of sidewalks and things like that. It's just, you know, too higgledy piggledy. Mm. Some places have build two lines, you know, where you have to put your house in a certain, you know, you, you can't set it back however far you want. You have to, you have to, you have to come to a line so, so that they line up at the street. It's a little bit too late for that. And another thing is, if we, we all agree that the corners are sort of the A, A lots, and mm -hmm. we have the fire department and its pavilion right on one of the A lots. So we, well, we most, story, yeah. most of the villages that I can think of do not have their fire departments right in the core of the village, it's either on the outer edge of the core or it's even beyond the, the village somewhat. 
Well, it's uh, out of the core here too, isn't it? No, it's right on. It's in. It's within the second core, secondary yeah. core. In the second so, core. Yeah. I know that Kelly had something to add. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I was just kind of going back to the point about like the the few limitations you have, and I don't really see it happening because of the context of everything surrounding it. But are you keeping any height limitations so you don't end up with like a five story? <laughs> apartment complex coming into somewhere where almost everything else is like three-story max yeah so currently the height limit is in the overall zoning it's not by zone and it's what i think okay. 32 feet 36 feet I think. 36 feet for the whole town mm -hmm. um okay. so i i don't think it really makes sense to change that i don't see us really getting anything taller than that just because yeah. of the infrastructure also it is, is there a limitation of uh, up to four units in one dwelling? If that were the case, there'd be no point in going high. So there is one to four units without review. So one to four units is treated like a single unit or a two unit house is currently treated. Um, and this is a growing um, standard. It's what um, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, the FHA, the VA loan, all those programs consider one to four units to be a single family um, house for mortgage purposes. And more and more um, towns and cities are doing that with their zoning, um, overturning what in the past has been uh, a very kind of classist and frequently racist zoning system of having areas that only single family homes are allowed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I, but then you can have more, right? Uh, you can have more. So that, that's what's allowed, just treated the way a single family house is currently allowed. But uh, multifamily is also allowed in this zone with site plan review. Mm. Olivia, um, since you did have a proposal flesh, well, fairly well fleshed out and on the table for, I think it was this one, this plot and this one, does that sound right? Correct. Could you talk about how that plan, as you know, as you can describe it in words anyway, would fit in with what we're talking about? Um, well, the way it was conceived was we tried to make it um, kind of easier for people to distinguish between, say, a residential, um, high-density residential area, high-density meaning because of water limitations and another four units, and then having a commercial on the 1849 lot um, with, you know, potentially some retail. But everything at this point is very limited because of the um, water treatment situation. So, um, you know, once it, a water limitation is removed, it would permit, you know, a lot more kind of creativity perhaps and uh, density in that right. area. I'm not sure if that answers your question. But. Well, I mean, I, I, I'm sort of going, going very much by memory, but I sort of remember something like this. Is that, that's a, a road. Do I, am, am I remembering correctly? And um, I think there was an area here which had a, a, some stores and there was some some housing here. I may be drawing the lines wrong, but that, that was that's the gist of what I remember. About, I don't know if the, the, the road wasn't that expansive, but basically, yeah, on 1839, there would have been some additional um, housing units and then some commercial um, hoping to tie in the historic barn and leave the, the historic structure in the front um, and then do some nice infill. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I, I don't have the resources. I'm, you know, I'm looking, you know, every, we're all looking for someone who would like to, you know, commit to this kind of um, vision and community building and who has the resources perhaps over mm -hmm. time to, well, remember, uh, we are we are thinking like 10, that. 20 years out, so it could happen. <laughs> I've only been working on it for the last 10 years. <laughs> yeah. 
So uh, Olivia and I had a conversation about um, kind of examples of places that worked and um, I, I drove through a place that struck me as kind of an interesting analog to her amount of area here um, and how something like this could, um, could be filled in in little bits to become more of a place um, and more of a center to the hamlet. And I'm gonna share a different screen for a second. Uh, I can't see the borders yeah. of it, but right. Uh, so this is um, in Pittsburgh, New York, and this is the Erie Canal. And there's this little that's Bushnell's Basin neighbor. Yeah, there's this little um, Pittsburgh downtown that has a building here, one here, one here, one here, one here, one here, and one hidden back here. So it's a lot of front and back spaces. Um, it has these, because of the proximity to the water, it has kind of an in and out kind of feeling that it's all kind of shared green space. The parking is, there's parking here, there's some parking over here now actually where this lawn is, um, but it's really uh, a shared kind of community that is similar in size to this. And unfortunately in um, Street View, you're from the other side of the street, you don't really get a great perspective um, view of it. I think it's cuter in person, um, but you have this one building up at the street that holds it, and, but these various other options that are farther back. Um, and it still is very much a small scale feeling, um, but you've got in this mix, uh, a restaurant, a brewery, um, a psychologist's office, a yoga studio, an ice cream place, um, uh, place, various other little offices. You know, there's a lot going on in that little amount of space. And uh, it's kind of the scale of something that I think um, Danby could support. I think it's even a stretch for right now, but it's a way that you can kind of fill in these little spots with small scale development rather than saying, how do we get someone who can do that 6,000 square foot or yeah. a long building that fills in the whole street. But what's the building over at the right? That is a gas station. Uh, tur turn around so we're looking behind where we are now and uh, you will find Tom Walls of Bush Bushnell's Basin. Mm -hmm. But the issue with that whole section, because I'm really familiar with that section and have known it before it was as it appears now, that the state has dumped millions and millions of dollars into both the canal side and to the road in front of these buildings. So, you know, this is a place that has just had enormous amounts of money dumped into it. And, they and, and that's the potential off. of the canal. So it was uh, money that was set aside. Um, Michael Bragman, originally um, Cicero, he was uh, an assemblyman, wanted to, to convert the canal in, from a, a mosquito infested um, junkyard into this tourism. And, you know, place and and this is how it was done by dumping in all of this state money, and uh, for Bushnell's Basin, it has worked out okay, just okay, because on the other side of Bushnell's Basin, there, there not exactly over the on the other side, but near there, there was a B and B, and they just closed. So, yeah, lots of B&Bs have closed. What's important here is that these are small buildings that can yeah. be built cheaply and simply. It's what someone can invest in a little bit at a time over time. Mm -hmm. Of course, canal infrastructure is incredibly expensive. And notice not, that they all have sort of a similar doing. architecture to them, you know, that they've been redone. Yeah, and they're, that's this kind of simple ability to you know, you want to open an ice cream shop, go ahead, do it. The town wants you to do that. We want to make it as easy as possible to do that. You want to convert one of these existing 
garages or sheds into that space, awesome, do it. We want that in the hamlet. We want to make it as easy as possible. If you don't want a convenience store or a gas station. Yeah. Well, if, if, if you look at the other side of the street, there's something called Hitching Post Plaza Shopping Mall with what looks to be a 10 or 12,000 foot uh, burger joint called Tom Walls. They serve yeah. good stuff, mind you, but it's a completely different character than this side. Right. And I, as far as I have heard, uh, I haven't heard a whole lot of people in Danby saying that this is what they would like the Hamlet to be focused on. Uh, that's not the that's not what I've seen in the comp plan, and it's not what I've heard in community meetings. There's always one or two people who say uh, that's what they're going for, but uh, so far I I'm pretty sure, and I'm operating on the assumption that I'm right that you know this is more what we're going for. Um, yeah, I think that's a good suggestion, David. I mean, it is uh, buildings that were set a little bit back and some are set at an angle and all of that sort of thing. Um, and they were pretty junky to begin with, but you know, in, in the long run, it seems to have worked out, at least for now. So these are rehab buildings as opposed to new ones in the old style. Right. Yeah. yeah, the were sidewalk really looks really important too. The sidewalk and the parking that's off the street. Yeah, and not having an eight-foot ditch. Yeah, but you have to remember <laughs> all of the uh, all of the people who live around Bushnell's Basin and how much traffic they get out on that road. Uh, even people commuting to and from work and things like that. So there, there's much more of a customer base. Right. Yep, there is. And that's why the town isn't mandating that anyone do this. The town is setting the table for an entrepreneurial person who wants to start with the one little one and it goes well and they want to do the second one and it goes well and they want to do the third one. We want that incremental over time. We're not looking. The town isn't building out for okay. giving a huge tax abatement to someone to do this. Um, we're just setting the table for people who want to do one little thing at a time to be able to do that as easily as possible. And I will tell you that when they put in that boat, uh, well, it's it's actually a tie up at, and you can overnight there if you want. That also seemed to contribute a lot to that whole area. At first there was, you just drove in from the road, you did your thing, you went to the store and that was the end of it. But then when people could walk along the canal or they could bring their kayak or boat mm -hmm. up and tie it up and get out and, and there's a little park there and everything, um, that seemed to make a big difference. And I, I, this is a great example. I didn't realize before that the, um, the street view image is different than the overhead image. So. Uh, if you notice here, um, there's now a parking lot here. There's some extra parking. Yes, and if right. we go back to the overhead image, there's no parking there. And what that says to me is that they allowed development to happen without saying, you can't open this uh, brewing company until you build a bunch of parking. Um, mm -hmm. And they said, hey, you want to come in? Come build this. We'll see how it goes and they built it and people liked it and more people came um, than they had parking for. And so then they built some more parking because they wanted to be a successful business. And you didn't have to tell them to do that. You could let them come in and function and then grow over time and not build too much, not waste a bunch of money and um, have a huge environmental impact of adding impervious surface that's unnecessary, um, but take it incrementally and grow over time. So I think that's a a great example that I didn't even realize was there. Maybe we should be talking to the zoning people there in the town of Pittsford to see, I think Bushnell's Basin is in the town of Pittsford, to, to hear from them exactly what the whole story is and how they did that because uh, it would take some coordination, I would think. Those, those shops weren't as cute as they look now. Well, no doubt, and you know, and then, you know, hiding underneath the additions, uh, some not more sympathetic than other, on Olivia's property are a couple of Greek revival buildings that are part of the original Hamlet core, uh, and a fairly nice looking barn is sort of hiding behind a whole range of garage doors. But um, 
that so there's potential there working with what's already there. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty uh, clear in my mind that when businesses are successful, people can afford to invest in their buildings and they want to make it nicer. Um, and so I don't think it's a functional way forward to say, oh, you want to do something, you need to bring in a whole bunch of money on the front end. Um, it gets nicer as people are successful and as they can afford to make things nicer. Um, and I think if, as long as you start small, you know, it's pretty hard to have a really terrible, very small building. Pretty much all small buildings are pretty cute. But it was, it was mostly because of the money that was dumped in by the state. I, I don't think that if the canal hadn't been as successful as it is, and uh, if the, even that whole area of Bushnell's Basin hadn't increased in activity, that those stores would have been so successful. We have some potential with the park. I mean, my understanding is that right. within the park, we have the Susquehanna Divide, where it would be really cool if you had a little, um, you know, a pavilion inside the park where kids can come and they see the water flowing one way if they go stand this way or one, you know, flowing the other way, going that way. I mean, there's maybe something that we could do with the park that would um, make it a more attractive place to visit for educational purposes or, you um, yeah, mostly for educational purposes that would then, you know, provide um, a demographic to go to a, a cafe or a brewery or something like that. Yeah, now, I don't want to spin our wheels too much about, you know, economic development here, because that, that getting into a different topic, what, again, we're really setting the table. And I think there are some questions here for looking at the broader Hamlet and, you um, uh, considering where we want to draw the ends. And there's really only three parcels that I think are really in question, which is the Nitron parcel, the Rose parcel, and I apologize for not knowing who owns. Oh, am I not sharing my screen? I'm not sharing my screen. Yeah, right now. Right. Right. I'm, I'm a little. Many things to share. David, in light, actually. In could we hear maybe from um, the Nichmans about this, the, 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 the solar initiative? Because I mean, their parcel is one we've talked about as being potentially very important for um, improving Hamlet density. And so if that's now a large solar farm, that will have, you know, certainly um, reduced the amount of space available for smaller lot sizes in housing. Um, so I don't know if if Russ and Kim want to speak about that, but I think there's something fairly easy to say, which is it hasn't been sold, it hasn't been approved as that use yet to be approved for that use. It has to be subdivided, which is impossible under the current zoning. So it would require a planned development zone, which is a process with the town board. Um, you know, so I, I think I assume there'd also be a lot of um, neighbor input of people along. Um, well, no, uh, it's not it's not going to really be seen by anybody from the road, and two of the three neighbors who are going to see it, I've already spoken to, and they're fine with it. One one guy was actually quite humorous. He goes, "Well, better than somebody buying it and running ATVs all over it, or." <laughs> houses being developed and having a ton of neighbors. The neighbors would be very quiet. Well, that is true. Unfortunately, the, when I go for a walk in the morning, I'll be looking at solar panels instead of a meadow now. I, I don't, you won't see them from the road. No, I, when, I mean, I see them from across where I am. Oh, okay. The hillside. Mm -hmm. Yes. The one thing I want to say about Bushnell's Basin again, uh, Right across the canal from there is a large parking area and sort of a little bit of a park so that people can park there and then they go bicycle riding on the other side of the park. So the Bushnell's Basin side mm -hmm. is for boating and then the other side of the canal has the long path for biking and hiking. And I personally have biked it four times. So it's, and you can cross over the canal with your bike on the road there. There's a way to get up onto the crossover road and come over to the shops. 
So it even that adds more traffic. That's my point. Even that adds more traffic for people. And I'm not sure that we have the kind of traffic that they have there on, on that road. Well, we got an awful lot of traffic. So. Yes. Yeah, we, we definitely don't have the traffic of Bushnell's Basin, but the traffic there supports this strip mall, all, right. uh, all of this commercial. You know, it's not just this little bit that we were talking about. It, the traffic there supports a huge, um, what's, it's not a mega center, but it's a, a neighborhood scale center you know, there's 5,000 people who are active customers of this. We're right. looking at something much smaller. And then uh, there's the Tim Hortons and the hotel. The, and, and Richardson's, I've been into Richardson's. It's a very popular restaurant. So it's it's a busy yeah. place. Um, but well, it, I think the, like if it's maybe not the best example, but like Candor, other than the gas station, it still feels like a town when you're driving through that super low speed zone and it's almost all houses it's just the density of the houses in that area that make it feel like more of a town you're um, talking about candor along 96 along uh, 96 yeah, yeah yeah as opposed to candor if you go down candor the side proper, right yeah yeah um so i think even if you're not like david saying you can't we can't do a whole lot about the economic development through zoning, but even if we make the lots smaller, that would make a more dense population of housing. If we don't get something more commercial, it would still make it feel like more of a town center. What I'm, what I'm afraid might happen and, and have the same concern over here in West Danby is that uh, given that the highway is not particularly pleasant, what people have chosen to do when they have built in recent decades is to build away from it. Right. Um, and so, I mean, I can, I can see them if, if, we, if we allow whatever people want to do, which is kind of you know, making it easy, that what we'll apt to get is people building the houses way back from the road. Would yeah, which not, I guess would that, that would be another zoning regulation if you want to limit how far away they can be. Would, would that not lead to a commercial, I'm pie in the sky here, but a commercial corridor along the road with a residential Behind backfield? It, conceivably. I'm, well, I'm not, I'm not sure this. that's a bad thing. Right. No, me either. Um, or if you had the speed limit lowered even more. Um, the would... more is going on, the more likely there was we can get the speed limit lowered too. I mean, it, it's right. hard to argue for a speed limit reduction when there's nothing to slow down for. You know? I see that Catherine has been patiently waiting. Yeah, I, I, it's hard to sit here and hear only negatives. When I can think of small things, like I know that we, it's, it's a little difficult, but if somebody decided they wanted to own, open a small wool shop or a small quilting fabric squares shop in some of the houses that already exist, where they now would have permission to do that, they are little destination shops. It doesn't mean there's going to be a lot in the beginning, but as we said, this is the idea is to make it so it's attractive to something like that. Um, we do have other things where we are along the highway. We do have Jennings Pond. We do have a park. There is an almost international frisbee, um, whatever that disc thing. Golf. Is Course. Disc, disc Course. golf. Yes, disc golf. And there's also, uh, they're doing more, a little stage area building the, in the park. I mean, the possibility of the cidery up, there are reasons people will come through Danby and Frisbee. Yeah. So, are we allowing the houses that exist there at this point in time to be turned into something commercial? Yeah. Yep. That's a great way to start in, and that again is why it makes sense to limit the area for commercial because you really want commercial to fill out those corners before you just spread it all over the place. Um, so that's that's why we propose more flexibility there and less other places. But I, I'd really like to talk about 
um, the limits of the Hamlet and where yeah. we want to draw the line um, in terms of what, what could be developed at this more flexible um, set of terms that we're talking about allowing. Um, um, Ed? I was just going to say, I, ba based based on um, what you said before, that 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 uh, Bald Hill is about, uh, sorry, Jennings Pond is about half a mile. Mm -hmm. it, it is of course very rough. Yeah, approximately. That's a about half a mile circle, and well, it's a quarter mile though, damn uh, radius. Um, actually, it's closer to three quarter diameter. Let me do it again. Um, now that I see how how the uh, how that annotate function works. Oops, you move the map; the circle doesn't. <laughs> it won't go away. Um, Ted, are you able to draw on the map from your computer? Yeah, you could too. Um, it's an annotate from uh, oh, the, one of the view menus. Where, where's the, okay? Hold still for a second. There's Lieb. Where'd Jennings Pond go? So D David's sharing mm -hmm. his screen, but you're able to um, comment on it with yeah. It's it's, wow. it's it's a zoom. I got function. it, Ted. Here's a here's a half mile circle. Okay. Yeah, so that's a good, uh, it shows me a lot, I think, just looking at the circle. Yeah, it includes and, both the community park and the beginning of Jennings Pond. Yeah, and and ha as we talked earlier, you know, the quarter mile is, is the easy walking distance and probably the half mile is the upper distance that's reasonable. So somewhere in that range. So, and if we had another circle emanating from the other, the upper, the more northern corner, um, yeah. I, I, those would those would sort of beg to get rid of the whole lot being pink, um, and the um, there's that one lot, you know, behind the school. Uh, Mm -hmm. that, that should probably not be all pink and and uh, I know the rose and the nichemans um, long pieces there uh, probably should not be those are the ones that look to me oh, that yeah, right. not be all pink um, and and at the risk of uh, saying something horrible it might actually agitate toward making the um, suburban community along Bald Hill Road uh, between Jennings Pond and downtown, uh, to turning that pink. Well, it probably would be pink. It's already orange. It is pink. It is pink. It is pink. Since yeah. Jennings yeah. Pond is the destination place there, maybe you want to do a circle kind of around Jennings Pond too, going that right. way and park. Yeah, yeah I'm, well, you don't, I mean, you I'm, don't want I'm to have that higher density though. If, I mean, given the well, I, the I'm re I'm referring to this this area here, and it's not pink. It's orange. I meant. Pink, as in this stuff. Oh, pink! It looks pink to me. Okay, it's yeah. it's uh, well, it would salmon, be, salmon colored. Right, it would it um, would be pink if it were so, not already orange. Yeah. Right, right. Oh, of course, my mistake. It's it's salmon. salmon okay, more developed. Um, so, so, David, if along the um, uh, Bald Hill Road there, I mean, like um, Phil used to have, you know, a little antique shop. Is that something mm -hmm. that would be allowed then? In that area, and we always enjoy them stopping at the antique yeah. shop and going on the way yeah. to the visit friends in the Small pond. Commercial. So, I mean, is that something that would be permitted in the future on, along that the site plan? Road? So, the site plan? right now, I think that is in the salmon. Yeah, the so Hamlet that's neighborhood. The Hamlet neighborhood. Yeah, you could um, do something like that. You could have a yeah. well, the site plan. So well, I assume that before they did that as a home occupation. Correct. Probably. Um, which is still um, allowed. Um, and there is also retail 
allowed in the Hamlet neighborhood zone, but it's currently allowed only on corner lots, and there mm -hmm. aren't a lot of corner lots. No. Um, in fact, there aren't any, except, well, yeah, except at the, at the main road. There's four here, um, but, you know, we were assuming in the future that there would be roads that would go in to make this interior space developable, and to be, you know, totally honest, you could have Mm -hmm. here. Right here. I think we talked about you can fit an entire block right here. Um, yeah. You know, a, a, even a down a downtown Portland block is 200 feet by 200 feet. So um, there's definitely possibilities of um, having spaces that are developed into little blocks. I think um, some plans for Livia's place talked about the road at the park connecting back through mm -hmm. to make that a little block and it would be it's difficult to have some other blocks because of where the stream is you get into right. needing um, bridges mm -hmm. um, it, it makes things difficult but you know one place that blocks could certainly happen is the old dobson parcel and yep. yeah they can also happen behind oh, yeah. things off of gunderman or on either side really on the school property if the school ever decided to sell that um, or this parcel. So one of the reasons that when I started drawing these and I was using parcel lines by principle because it, things get confusing when you start yeah. splitting up parcels, but we can do that, it's fine, um, is that a lot of the areas within these circles are not developable. You can't, so, you know, the ideal, the ideal neighborhood develops everything in here to serve the center and maybe has some little strip parks, but mostly you get your big open space outside and um, right. development in the circle. But when, you know, a quarter of the circle is a giant park and then, you know, the middle of the circle is cut out by a stream, maybe you need a little more space and maybe it's not so bad that you get a little more development gotcha. outside that half mile. Um, kind of shifts the circle over a bit, really functionally. Yeah, I uh -huh. mean, the, the concept of the circle is that it, everyone is that distance to the center. Right. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, it, it's not abnormal to have the neighborhood and then have some less dense or even equally dense development at the edge that's a little bit longer. Um, to the middle, it can still function. So uh, what we need to think about is, do we lose something by allowing this to be developed at this density that we're talking about? Um, does having that allowed make it more likely that we get the infill here that we want? Um, I think we, we also have a bunch of wetlands in there. Which makes well, I'd, li I'd just like to speak up for this parcel on Lieb Road where we have the what are, monastery Lieb? or whatever it is. Zen Center. Yes, the Zen Center. And I mean, it's very important to them to maintain all of this open space. And so well, no one is almost encroaching. This, how clustered that is. Yeah. None of this okay. zoning is forcing people to build things on their land. They can keep their- No, I didn't exactly mean that. I, I wasn't <laughs> implying that, but it's just that the circle is getting very close to, to what they are trying to do. And so is this solar array. Well, for what, for what it's worth, I can't speak for them, but this area here is densely wooded. So they're kind of protected from the parcel to the north. Yeah. yeah. And when they and when they go for walks, they go the other direction. <laughs> they yeah, their walks generally cover Lieb Road, Comfort yeah. Road. Comfort. They go the and other then way. back on Bald Hill. Yeah. You know what the, what's gonna be important here is having roads that we don't have. Yeah. You know, if it you know, block you know, lot by lot, house by house development is never gonna develop that back area. Right. There has to be has to be a road. And if we want it to develop, we may have to put the road in rather than right. wait for somebody with deep pockets to come along and say, I'm going to put a road and put some houses back there. Uh, wild but idea. You're talking about the Zen Center. It really is a business. I mean, it's a type of business. And you have to remember that. 
Mm -hmm. So we're not talking about the um, Zen Center. It's outside, yeah. the, outside the Hamlet. So, so, right. so I, I withdraw my, I mean, I, I think that it makes sense. I mean, and if we're talking about, you know, maybe 20 years, there being a road right. uh, and, a lot, you know, having a denser Hamlet, which is what happens in places like Cander and Newfield. And, mm -hmm. you know, they've got actual neighborhoods that people can ride their bikes around the block, you know, without um, like having to take their lunch with them. Um, mm -hmm. But so that that whole you know those those big lots maybe make more sense to just leave them salmon colored. Mm -hmm. Well, oh. here, here's here's a wild idea. I mean, oh. last I heard, Bob Rowe did not want his area developed. But yeah. let let's just dream for a moment. Could uh, those solar farm people be convinced to put the, to build their access road to the to town standards using the row property there by opening it up to development? I don't it think would make, completely it would make wild the and unrealistic idea. Happy. The bald hill folks would be happy about that, but that's not part of the zoning. So I think we should stick to the zoning issue because we won't ever get done otherwise. Probably um, true. Wow. It's just a future thing. Yeah. Well, I don't know that you can, you know, they sort of go hand in hand, though. I mean, the, the you, you go to, if, if you zone for, you know, do what you want, but without, a, without thinking about the roads, what you're going to get is a whole bunch of flag lots, I think, because that's what individuals can do. They can, they can say, well, I can build my house behind this house uh, now. And, and, and once that happens, it's going to be hard to put the roads in, put a road in yeah. later on, you know, so, 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 um, you know, way back when the, 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 the thought was, you know, you, you put your future roads on the map uh, and you don't necessarily build them right away, but you've got the roads there on the map so that uh, when people do things, you don't, they don't put it in the middle of what, what was projected to be a road by and by. I think when the question is whether those um, long pink ones should, or the long orange ones, light orange, should be part of the uh, uh, Hamlet neighborhood is the basic question here. And it seems like it's easier to keep lots together. Yeah. The whole lot is easier to keep together. So it seems to me it's easy to keep together so that yeah. in the future, it's possible. Right. That's what we're saying. Yeah. 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 I, I would agitate for breaking them into two zones. Which? Um, Bob, both of them, Bob, Bob's, yeah. Bob, uh, Russ, Russ, Kim's and Bob's. Um, and basically the, the, the back ends would turn into those uh, hatched square areas. hatched greens. Yeah, I agree with that too. It's, it's, it's awful far to the west. And if there is a solar farm, I think it would easily cover both of them. <laughs> yeah. David, nope. is the, the Rose property on 96B included in the orange area? At this point, I can't tell. That's the part with the wetland in the middle of it. Yeah. This one. But, but is it in the dark orange? No. No, no. no it's, it's this one. Yeah. Right. But I mean, they have, they have road frontage with the barn and potentially you know, the barn and their home, if they decided they wanted to move hmm. down to the lake, they could do something then commercially with that. Um, I don't think they have any intention, but I mean, I, I don't know why they would be excluded, actually, um, yeah, yeah. from their, 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 the property that's specifically along 96B. Yeah, that, that, that barn had potential, but it's not going to have potential too much longer. It's something that doesn't do something. To no, it's it. very sad, but maybe if they knew they could do something, you know, commercial with it, maybe, who knows? I don't know. I can uh, talk to Rebecca Ward, who's um, Liz Rose's daughter. Mm. But what I think how do we feel about that? If this was in the orange, just this side of the stream along the road. Yeah. Hey, we agree on something. <laughs> mm. Well, that that does bring up the next question. If you if you made that little area orange that sort of makes for a incentive to continue that orange stripe to join up to Hornbrook Road. The other orange? <laughs> um, makes sense. In other words, all orange. All the, the way right through there. Dark orange. Right. I mean, I'll, I'll check with um, the rows. I mean, they may not want their 
They well, probably, right. last I heard, they probably wouldn't, but mm -hmm. it's worth checking. We're, we're, we're looking ahead here. Right, right. But they the might not be excluded either. I mean, they might not want to be excluded. It might give them more options, so. Yeah. Yeah, where, could be. Where would the road go? If you were to road across, you mean? The road from, I guess, Gunderman to Bald Hill? Is that what you were implying, Gunderman to Bald Hill? No, that, think, that's not going to happen. I think that would. That, yeah, that's not going to happen. That's been it, that was proposed a long time ago. Yeah, Gun, yeah, Gunderman yeah, to Bald Hill. There, there was there was once a discussion about uh, you know having the entrance to the driveway parking lot of town hall be a road that goes right. back and then over to Gunderman. So that was that was thrown around at one time. Right. It, it was something like this. Something like that. And that part of it does remain an option. Yeah, or the other way, over to over to Gunderman. But, yeah. Oh, I, I over to Gunderman. I, that would run a road next to somebody's house. That'd be terrible to do to them. Yeah. Well, maybe somebody wouldn't mind it because <laughs> they could be on a corner. <laughs> I, who knows? Yeah. yeah there's a, the the problem with us spending time thinking about yeah. how that could happen is that there's an infinite number of ways that it could happen. And yeah. whatever we come up with is not gonna be the way that someone in the future comes up with. So it's really thinking about where we're okay with density, yeah. the limits of that, um, that we can kind of be able to move forward. Um, mm -hmm. And it sounds like, most of the people I heard, and this is a chance to chime in if you disagree, I heard two people say that they think it's inappropriate to keep the whole parcels in. And I heard several other people say, just leave it as it is. It's not going to make that big of a difference one way or another. Well, if you had part of it as green and white, green and white squares, that would make the density lower than the light orange, right? Yes, it would make it in dramatically, dramatically lower. I mean, it, it, seems, it, it seems like Rose property is done properly. Rose property goes up more west than ours. You've got his divided down the middle. Now maybe I don't think he owns two sections. He has 128 acres. He goes more west than I do. Um, or at least as far so west that, as I do. Has yeah, no, no. Uh, Oh, wait a minute. That flag lot right there. That's that's Bob Rose. Yeah. So I that one too. I think yeah. So I think I think where you have that division is perfect for Bob's because it's right behind those houses along Gunderman. If you want to keep that line coming over or come you know to the east on on our property oh. and and do that, that would that would make sense. I was thinking more to the east. Yeah, me too. Like maybe to the edge of the pink. Yes. Uh, well, yes. E edge of which pink? Oh, yeah. the, um, the Gunderman well, Road pink. Cover the Gunderman the Road pink. <laughs> Closer to the circle, in other words. Yeah, in other yeah. words, like that? That no, sort of thing? All the way over to the pink at Gunderman Road. To the pink at Gunderman Road. Right there. Ron yeah. is talking oh, about I like this. Yeah. Yep. Something like that. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. That's what I drew. It's planning a road that nobody's going to. No, 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 no. No, we're not, we're not talking roads. roads. We're, we're talking about, about, we're talking about, about the Hamlet edge uh, of this zone. So, but, so if you own a parcel that is zoned in two different zones, how does that affect it? I would imagine that makes it an automatic no-brainer for a subdivision, but. How would that affect it? Well, the taxes are going to be crazy. It doesn't no. change anything until you do something. No, I don't think the taxes would be affected. Um, the taxes are not changed by a zoning change. Mm -hmm. um, if after a zoning change, a bunch of parcels sell and the yeah. price is dramatically yeah. different, then the taxes will change. Um, but in, until that happens, just having a zoning change isn't going to change anyone's assessment. Um, yep. It depends on what you do with your land, actually, in my opinion. 
So yeah, exactly. So Ron did, is precisely if put, right. If you put that line there, would it make sense to do the same thing on the other side of Gundaman? And follow that same line. Look yeah. Those, those like that, there. that's the edge of the hamlet. Oh, yeah. let's put it behind the school. Let's make the edge of the school the line instead of going... look at all the buildings back there on that flag lot. I mean the end that of the driveway. The weird yeah. lot. Weird lot, yeah. Yeah. That's a flag lot for sure. Yeah, a little bit. I, you know, I was completely unaware that that lot extended all the way over to ninety to ninety six B. Yeah, look at that. To... Yeah. That is amazing. That's a long lot. So that's a, this is the question. This is a big lot that has the potential to do some of the kinds of stuff that we're talking about. Do we right. want to limit how much of it can be done on that by drawing a arbitrary line halfway through it? Or do you want to just leave it to have the flexibility however they want to access it? Um, you know, in all of this, it's a well, crap not, shoot if anything ever happens here, or if anything ever happens here, or if anything ever right. happens here, you know, that's, those are big projects that come with big dollars that none of this is going to happen next week. Um, but we're setting the table for the long term future for the possibility. But the circle has meaning, though. I mean, it's not like we're saying, well, what the heck, you know, but. Uh, but yeah, I, I think that Rhonda's suggestion about uh, drawing a line based on the school, something, something like that. Um, might actually have some, there's some merit in that. Yeah, and connect it then down to the pink church. Well, you could run it right across the road and, you know, it'd, it'd be closer to the edge of the circle if you did that. If you come on the south side of Gunnerman with that one, you're taking up any chance of Hamlet on Rose's yeah. property or ours. I mean, right. want to do it on the north no, side, do it. This I can't think be the line you right. before was a good one. Well, we're just thinking. We're not, we're not, you know, engraving anything in stone. We're just sort of thinking. Not yet, anyway. Yeah, but I'm going to just butt in for like everybody else is. Yeah, you know, go the, ahead. That go down to 96B, one of the things we've been talking about is trying to encourage the possibility of other cluster housing. And if you don't mess with those, um, you know, leave them the way they are, that section that goes down to 96B has may may be able to have some access although i don't see it but and the stream is in the way but you know that idea of some clustered housing here and there isn't terrible either for that's one of the things we talked about with hamlet the two colors of hamlet well there there is their access would possibly be through through around there and yeah you could end oh. up with some kind of cluster in here for sure but extending it further back to the west that that <clears throat> that's different who owns that parcel jeez oh, not sure it matters at all no i'm just curious i mean it looks like they have a number of buildings in there and a pond right um I yeah, was on, on, on the wondering... western edge yeah. I was wondering if it was a farm. What are all those buildings? Is it some sort of a farm? How's it used? Is it in the Ag District? Probably. Mm -hmm. Everything's in the Ag District. Just about. <laughs> uh, says the voice of uh, voice of wisdom there. That's not in the Ag District. No, it isn't. What do you know? <laughs> we found something that's not in the Ag District. So. I think we're we're getting towards the end of time here, and I'd I'd really like to look at the other Hamlet. Um, mm -hmm. So I I what I would like everyone here to do is think about two things and send me an email. One, we've got three lots here that fall outside of this distance. Yeah, should we cut them off, or um, is it reasonable to extend into that? Two, we've got a bunch of space here here, here, that falls within our circle that is not currently designated as Hamlet neighborhood. Should it go in? 
if we're going to cut stuff off here because it's more than a half mile from the main road and the, the center, should there be potential to develop these parcels that are within that desired distance to the core? Mm -hmm. Of course, that, that, that northmost circle sort of treats that, that, that um, Miller Road, is that Miller? Um, yeah, that's Miller. Intersection as if it were part of the core, but it isn't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that, it north, historically that, was. I, that northmost circle, I, I, I'm not as comfortable with that as, as with the others. And if it, if it was there, I, you know, the, the diameter, the radius of those circles, I think, should be getting smaller as it goes north. Mm -hmm. I'll buy that. I think in the same spirit that Catherine pointed out, um, up by north of um, West Miller, that green is another possibility. Although I don't know how the stream works out, but that's another possibility for future cluster housing. Here? Uh, no, for north of that. North of that. The yeah, around there, probably between the um, between the stream and 96B. And that's and the weather, what's included in, in that northwest corner of your circle you just yeah. drew. Yeah. yeah in, in other words, behind where that new cidery is. Yeah. All right. So, so I would like everyone to think about those things. Think about are those areas that should be added in? Are these areas that should be taken away? Send me an email this week and let's look at West Anby in the 13 minutes that we have left of this very long meeting. So give, do you do your half a half a mile circle again? Or? Should we transfer West Anby to Newfield and not worry about it? <laughs> Joel would not like that. Well, some people would like it, but well. there, there, is, there is some sense in it. Yeah, well, they're yeah, in well, this Newfield well, School District. It is. Well, this part of West Ambie is Newfield School District. Yeah. The southern part is Spencer, but nothing. Even worse. So but, let's let's talk about West Ambie. Uh, this, these lines were drawn based on what's served by water. Water allows us to go down to half acre lots. Um, with the health department's approval. Um, as in the other hamlet, the zoning doesn't have the minimum lot size. It's limited by the what the health department will allow. Um, Do we so make the circle a little smaller? Well, this this circle is just borrowed from the other circle. It's a mm -hmm. half mile. Where where's Slater's Lane in that? Is that off outside of your salmon colored area or inside? It's outside to the north. Yeah, I was, I'm actually thinking in terms of geography. Yeah. Um, in other right words, some, some of those parcels may, the, the boundary of the circle, so to speak, may be determined by geography as much as anything else. Yeah, that's right. Well, I mean, if, you, if you put topo on here, you would find that the, you know, the, the, uh, the ham was kind of nestled in a f relatively flat spot, but then the hill goes up pretty steeply on the west end. Oh, there you go. Yeah, so... Any anything west of here is not prime buildable area. Right. Here, let me put the fifteen percent. That slopes over fifteen percent. So, uh, so conversation I had with Joel about this. Again, I use whole parcels. Whole parcels are in based on what has service from water. Yeah. I think it's clear that going all the way to the back here, you're not gonna get that development back there. Does that mean we want to cut the zone um, smaller? That's kind of up to this group to discuss. I, you know, it's not really possible to develop at that density, so. Does it make a big difference? I'm not so sure, um, but we certainly could, you know, draw a line along the that slope. You could have the line be maybe right along here, um, so you. Keep My concern in. is more about 
uh, the Cayuga Inlet. I don't think we should be allowing people to build close to the inlet because it can be prone to flooding. And so I, I wouldn't like to see any more building on the eastern side of that circle. Is this the Cayuga Inlet, this thing I just highlighted? Yes. Yeah. But it's also um, rather down um, yeah. as it, when in that area where it crosses crosses over there. It's it, it's a it's in a very low spot compared to the land around it. Right, and there are a bunch of protections. And don't forget the railroad. Right, that's in there. The no railroad. One's, no one's forgetting it. There, there's a bunch of things that zoning isn't needed for. So there are rules about not building in flooding areas. Uh, no one's going to build on the railroad. Um, so we don't need to, we don't need to be overly focused on those things because we have decent rules that deal with that. Um, but what we need to consider is where we're going to um, end the hamlet. And you know, we really do want development where it's served by water. Um, but the there's some question for me about where would you allow subdivision? So just so that we're clear, the size of a, a block that could have buildings all around it, this parcel could be an entire block. So if you, wherever you can fit that in, you could do a block that comes off of the road and goes back to it um, or multiple blocks. Right. Uh, Joel, do you know? Do, do you know? Do you know? Technically, is the water district capable of of supporting an awful lot of um, expansion, or would it need to be expanded in order to meet the the demand? There's quite a bit of capacity, and it's also worth remarking that even though the water district doesn't go past the railroad track, um, the reason it doesn't go past the railroad track is because the people on that side didn't have any problem with water. Right, okay. so it, it always can be expanded. Yeah. But really, there's capacity here. We have capacity in uh, the existing area. Um, we did talk about, and this is a change from the last map, we did talk about all of this area served by water. Um, I had previously put that in, I turn off the slope. Uh, I previously put that in the Hamlet neighborhood. We removed it with feedback from the people who live there. Um, who said, you know, they want water because they're concerned about pollution from the old uh, landfill, but they, they don't want that kind of development here, even though it's kind of started there already. It still feels very rural there because most, a lot of the houses are back from the road and you've got fields on the road. Yep. So for now, we're not, even though it's served by water, we're not focusing development down there. Hmm. Um, it would be nice to have a bed and breakfast close to the biodiversity preserve because we get a lot of people coming from elsewhere. I mean, the biodiversity preserve has quite a reputation and pe uh, people have come as far from as from Canada. Really? And they stay in Ithaca. <laughs> so. Well, there yeah. is a bed and breakfast in Newfield down the road. Yeah. Is that still operating? I thought they were closed. Changed hands, but I think it's still operating. Well, maybe we can focus back on the hamlet because the zoning isn't going to force anyone to build a bed and breakfast. No, um, and there's a possibility with a with a house that's actually in that just north of the of the Sylvan there. Um, it used to be a it's a big house and it has served as a, a, a home in various capacities in the past. So, yeah. Possibility for the future. I don't know this area as well David but it seems like what you have is I mean if you want to if you want to take advantage of that water supply it seems like what you have matches the circle pretty well if you were truly trying to stick to that half mile circle it seems like there's a few lots to the north that maybe don't need to be included but there's also just that one half mile unlike mm -hmm. um, the other that has two so Right, but that is a half mile, which is more than walking distance. That's so, true. Right. I'm okay with. It. I just don't. I don't. Uh, I don't think that the uh, the western part of a lot of those lots, because it happened to be a lot, runs a lot farther out than you would want to include. I think 
that Argus were drawing the line not based on lots, but on, you know, other oh. considerations. What was that? Mm -hmm. Right. That I was to do the same thing you did on the other side. The other side was to um, think about it and send an email to David if the if they want those lots cut partially in, instead of keeping the whole lots in the uh, uh, light orange area. Yeah. That would make sense to look at it again and send it. Yeah. The one that seems very isolated is the one all the way to the east at the north. That doesn't seem like it's just kind of out there by itself. Yeah, it does, and it's on the, you know, literally on the wrong side of the tracks. Um, yeah, and that's yeah. one of those examples of it's one parcel with the piece that's on the road. Yeah. So when I selected this parcel, that's what comes yeah. in. Joel, so is, there a, cut that. Is, is there a geography issue on the uh, east side of 96 or on the east side of the railroad? as well. I'm thinking there's a steep slope in there somewhere. Well, I mean, it gets steeper the farther east you go, yeah, but, could, could, uh, but could. we're getting development up that road currently where it was all, it was outside the hamlet before until, until we, in you know, the last couple of decades when a couple of houses got built on the, on the, on the north side of Station Road there that weren't yeah, there actually, before. But, but, the, yeah. but, that's, but that whole field area back there could be you know, developed uh, in addition, although it's getting kind of far from the from the you know core area. Are you yeah, about think, this area, Joel. Yeah, yeah. I think I was when I talked about steep slope. I think I'm talking about the area that's um, oh up here. It look it looks a lot flatter down 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 here. Well, it is. Although it's, it's pretty moundy everywhere. Yeah. I'll, I'll turn back on the 15% slopes. Everything that's white is 15% slopes or greater. So there's a little bit of it all around, which ma makes it a little bit difficult. Um, Can you, you can't go to like maybe 20 or 25% with that. Uh, is that not doable? No, <laughs> I can't. <laughs> I could that, do that. That would, that would cut out some of the noise, so to speak. Another time. <laughs> Um, yeah, but, yeah, it, the shape. But the topo line kind of show you. I mean, look how steep it is over on the on the west side, towards you know, the southwest of this of this um, map. There, that it really does go up pretty steeply. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, ge de take geography into account, and then all the comments you get, I suppose. All right. So why don't everybody send me comments? You can print this out and draw on it if you want. Um, you can you know, mark it up electronically. You can send me words that I'll try to figure out. And if I don't understand them, I'll respond to you by email and we can work it out over the next week. Um, and yeah. I'd hope to have this updated by next week. And while you're thinking about that, um, it was Joel's proposal that the, the core was too small and he would like to see more of this area in the core. Um, I don't know if, if he still felt that way after we talked about the fact that the residential density that's allowed is similar in both. It's just the size, larger commercial buildings are allowed. Yeah, I would, in, I would run the orange across, you know, so that it, it was more of a, more Valley View was included in it because it's essentially the main street rather than the highway. You know, there's a uh, solar farm here. Um, yes, not very big though. Not terribly big, and certainly not terribly. Uh, what's the right word? Uh, level. <laughs> no, it's not. It's perched on a side hill. Well, the one in Wego is built on a hillside too. Yeah. As long as the hill faces the right way, that works great. So these are twenty foot contours. So you know. Even being this far apart, that's definitely still a hill. Yeah. Uh, so Before we go away, could I just say that I've, I'm in the hiking group that I've been in, we have had several hikes in West Danby. West Danby is much more walkable. It has a lot, we've, you know, we've hiked in, in Danby, you know, up here Danby, but lots of, it's inviting to walk. So it is a nice community feel there and it's welcoming. So. It is a nice hamlet and mm -hmm. it might be yeah. yeah, yeah, this density of houses and also it really helps how narrow this road is. Yep. Is, right. is really what creates 
are a good Hamlet neighborhood. I'm, I'm actually surprised that uh, Department of Transportation allows such high speed in that area. Well, they haven't been able to talk them into dropping it because we haven't asked. Yeah, I know. It's just surprising considering the density. It's also surprising given the curves. Could, could, um, the, 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 the sight lines are sufficiently limited that it's, um, it's, it's a little bit dangerous to have it, the speed limit that high. Yeah. Yeah. Well, again, and, and, again, that's and something Catherine and her hikers town, must be awful brave. To is be something that the that. town can work on outside of the zoning process. Part Not of part of the zoning process. More general plan there. Yeah. Yep. So, David, I have a quick question about the um, the next steps. When you know people get back to you about their suggestions, will there then be um, you know first a public hearing, or there it will get submitted to the town as a recommendation, and then there's a public hearing. At what point? Is there any public further public input? Well, we'll continue to have public input like this every other week. Every uh, what are we? The second second Friday. Uh, we're mm -hmm. continuing to have this meeting twice a month um, going forward. Uh, when we get to you know a formal public hearing, uh, that's later in the process towards the end of the year. Um, okay. All right. We're just. Yeah, when there's a draft of this, it will be shared. Um, you know, the the technical term of a public hearing is not particularly useful in my humble opinion. It's just requires you to post a specific formal notice in a paper in a way that nobody ever looks at or ever sees that costs the town 60 bucks, um, which you know, I think the emails that we send out and posting this up on the website is probably far more effective than the legal notice in the Ithaca Journal of an official uh, time to come speak for three minutes and not be responded to. Yeah. <laughs> but somehow then we need to reach out to more people who are in these, you know, potential uh, neighborhood zones and get their input or... Um, you know, inform them. I don't know. Maybe I'm not understanding exactly how the process will work, but. Um... Oh, absolutely. We want more people involved in this and, mm -hmm. you know, that this group needs to help in that process of bringing more people this information, bringing them to these meetings, talking to your friends and your tenants and your family who live in these areas and letting them know. Mm -hmm. You know, I can't knock on everyone's door and right. give them a personal one-on-one -on -one presentation. Um, we you know, we get this when we get this firmed up a little bit. We could. I'm sorry. To, when we get this firmed up a little bit, we could put we could put you know a map like this in the DMB News. That would probably elicit some comments. Put it mm -hmm. on the on the website for people to put input and. Um, you know how you're asking us for input just can we put it on the website or maybe on that facebook page and ask people for more input yep it's already in both of those places you, you do have to do a little searching to find it i think just specifically this as one request because the link on the facebook page that you'd put up about the meeting went to the the whole um website page for the town for the hamlet group and there was a mm -hmm. lot of information in there. Mm -hmm. So is that really what you want right now, David? And is input on this map? Is that the, kind of the goal between now and the next meeting? Uh, yeah, that's what I would like. Um, and Olivia did a great job of sending me feedback on the draft zoning. And Olivia, I actually have a response to your comments. I, I don't think we have time to talk through them now. Um, All right. But I, I did think that they were useful. And I do think if I had more of that, um, it would be useful to work through with the group. Um, I was hoping we could do some of that today, but it really took the whole time just to work through the map. So did it possible to send those comments to the group that she sent in that you found useful? So we would have an idea of what you find useful. Because I sometimes feel like the things I say aren't useful. <laughs> <laughs> just yeah. Yeah, hey, cool. back, back to the thing on the map with letting people know. Um, saying it's on a website, I don't think many Danbyites go to a website. 
Um, saying it's on Facebook, that's good for those who are on the town Facebook thing, the DMB South Hill community. But there's a lot of people being missed. I think putting it, if you put it in the uh, Danby area news, those two little maps of the hamlet with some of that stuff, I think that would show people who live there, hey, this is your house, your property, your community. And if people don't read that, which unfortunately too many people I talk to don't even look at the Danby area news, which is sad, um, then that's, that's on them at that point. There's also the next door, what is it, the next door list serve? I get that and I could try to figure out how to maybe post something and encourage people in the Danby area to go to the website and look at the zone, proposed zoning changes. Just one more way to reach out to people. Mm -hmm. It would be useful also to, if we have paper copies of things, to take them to your neighbors. You get to visit your neighbors. That's actually a nice thing to do every now and then. And That's a really good idea, Pat. And you get people who will not just go and look at something because they don't have a reason to. Yeah, we could do that now. Yeah. Guys, here's a real crazy idea. But I remember with the town of Ith with the city of Ithaca when they were talking about the design guidelines, they rented the downstairs of I one of the hotels or someplace in town invited people to come in from the community and look at all the proposals and it was pretty complicated they had quite a few different boards up with different information about it maybe we could in a think COVID thing will get a little bit calmer so we could have a have that set up at the town hall that people could just stop there and look at things is there any chance of that happening anytime soon joel the town well, hall being open? Well, we're talking about it now. Uh, at the next meeting, in fact, hmm. op reopening the town hall. Uh, okay, well, that's a possibility. And the governor, I mean, uh, and the president just announced today, you know, we, we could take our masks off now. Um, well, the president, but the New York didn't say it yet. Yeah, no, but- um, how, about, how about the gathery, Nancy? Well, the, I would love to, I'd be happy to post a meeting at the gathering for the town that we have a, a dis, an open discussion about this, but we also have the town hall that could also work for it, you right. know? I yeah. mean, if the town hall, it's, it's available, I'm happy to offer that. But um, I was just thinking of more, having an, a, a big blow up of the map, maybe we're not quite there yet, but for people to, come in and comment on it and ask questions about it. Like it would be open all the time, right? They would have, mm -hmm. Or whenever the town hall is open and try to get the word out to people that way. If the library- Let's just one other- The library is there as well and if people could be coming in for that, people could right. be coming in for other meetings and then they could be there and see that as well. So. When we did the NRI with CJ and she had all of those maps up at the gallery, um, a number of people came, not a lot, but uh, we could do the same at the town hall with, she had, you know, easels with maps on them and people came in and looked and she was there to answer questions. I think her being there to answer questions was helpful. Hmm. I, yeah, I don't know if the fire department's planning anything this year, but if they have any events at the fire department, we could do something there too. Yeah, I think especially with the weather getting nicer, I'd be happy to have maybe one of these sessions coming up. We do it outside town hall or at the park or something like that, and we can invite people. I think the reality is this is the method that more people will show up to than something sitting open in town hall or, or something else. I could be wrong. Um, you know, I, I want to be careful about what I can commit to because these, you know, the time to make a room full of maps and posters is substantial and we really want it to be time well spent. Um, I'm happy to do it. Uh, I think thinking about the right time, you know, is it the, is the right time now when it's very drafty? Um, do we want to wait until this committee has kind of honed things a little more? Um, you know, there's arguments for both. You want people to be involved when they can have legitimate input because asking people for input when you're done um, is a little disingenuous. 
um, if you're not going to change it at that point. Um, uh, but you know, let's let's keep thinking about it and talking about it, and you know, maybe um, when we have a draft in you know six weeks, maybe that's when uh, we want to have that event and have an open forum for questions and things like that. David, uh, another it's sort of a technological question. You're preparing these maps originally based on algorithmic criteria, mm -hmm. and now we're modifying them based on subjective criteria. Mm -hmm. Would it be possible to come up with an interactive map where you, you can hover over parcel and find out why it was colored the way it was? No, it's it's already not that simple. It's already we started with metrics and then looked at things and adjusted because metrics are imperfect. So you know, we, I already started started from numbers and then went to, oh, well, these things are close together and it makes more sense to bring in this thing that's next to it, even though it doesn't quite match the numbers. And Because you know. the, the, the reason I was asking is that your average resident, first thing they look at this map, the first thing they're gonna do is zero right in on their property or their neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And it sure would be nice if they have a question to be able to answer those thousand questions right on one spot. Yep. Um, I, to be honest, the better answer is let's talk about why it should or shouldn't be that and make a decision if it needs to change. Um, because none of, none of the reasons that things are a particular zone are stronger than having a conversation about what's important and what the town wants. So I'd rather focus focus our efforts there. Um, yeah, I have just one quick um, idea, and I wonder if we should meet and do a, and walk and do a walk together, because looking at a map and lot lines and and you know googling and look at the facade of a building is very different than actually boots on the ground, and we could meet you know, a quarter mile out of town, out of the hamlet and walk all the way down to past Gunderman Road. And, and I think we would get a better feel for what is real and what's possible for the hamlet. Um, I would do it at five o'clock and a lot of people are asking there. what's going on in Danby. <laughs> well, I mean, I did it with historic when I was on the historic Ithaca board, I did it. We would meet and we would walk in different neighborhoods to really get an assessment of what it looked like. What do the houses look like? Where, you know, maybe that lot that could be a house that could be turned into a cool little boutique, like somebody mentioned earlier. But in, um, I think, like I mentioned before, the house right north of the the gallery is a really cool old house now i don't know if it's savable the roof's been leaking for a while but um i don't know do you guys think that would be a good idea we could have a, a lunchtime walk or schedule something like that people liked the walk they had with jason when you know everybody seemed to really like that idea I'd, what was the I, idea i'd Russell? participate i'd participate for sure well, we should maybe do it between now and our next meeting. I think we'd learn a lot. I don't know. I think, you know, you, you could, a case could be made for doing it in every neighborhood, really, because you, you, you almost have to have a street view in order to really see whether the what 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 looks okay and overall makes sense on the ground. Imagine that. I think a, that's a, probably true, Joe, but I'm just talking. We're just talking about the Hamlet and trying yeah, to figure Hamlet's, out. Yeah. Trying to figure out what part of the hamlet should be what, what the board boundaries are and stuff. And even south of where the hamlet is, it's, there's some cool old houses down there that might be sometime. I mean, Olivia, wasn't your house down in there? You had a really beautiful federal down there. 1874 so, Dandy Road, yeah. And, the, um, yeah. And, and that's a nice, maybe we haven't even really talked about that area of the hamlet. That, I think that's, that's, an that's area. part of the, that's in the salmon colored area yeah, you're you're talking yeah. about um 96b where it curves south of the uh, right right right, right. Oh, i mean that, right. That, that historically it was a, a commercial area there was a little bakery in the um kevin and gladys's place next to 1874 so, and the and there was an antique shop the place we had 1874 was an antique shop for um, a number of years mm -hmm. hmm. and there is another corner down there yep that's right uh, <laughs> Michigan yeah. hollow yeah 
Right. I mean, maybe that's, that's more the road. natural extension is to go south and look at that. I don't know, do half mile south from the hamlet maybe. where your present property is. Maybe there are a couple of really mile. very derelict properties there on the corner. There's a lot of derelict properties. That's a whole nother committee. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. I would South love of the hamlet that belongs to Russ, doesn't it? Mm. And Russ and Steve mm. Bake, uh, Steve Barber. Well, uh, I like this idea of no. getting together and having a. <laughs> I don't own it. Walk, Nancy. Um, so why don't we talk about that by email? Um, offline. I do think that it can be useful to get a better sense of things when we're making these delineations. Um, One thing that's obvious looking at the map, and it, and it was clear from the uh, in the uh, Hamlet revitalization plan, is that the area south of Bald Hill Road, uh, you know, up between, between Bald Hill and Michigan Hollow, has the least development constraints. There's no creek running through it. There's not wetlands there. The soil is uh, better suited for septic. Uh, and did the revitalization plan make use of that? Um, it, it did suggest, um, but then, uh, you know, the folks on Ball Hill Road don't want anything around them on either side. Yeah. Uh, so what, why don't we put a pin in that? We're well over our time now. Yeah, yeah. sorry about that. <laughs> Sorry. Is is this group compact enough to uh, resume uh, sending those uh, mass emails so we can talk amongst ourselves between meetings? I don't think that there is a bound on who is in this group, right? This this group is whoever shows up. We have someone here who's yeah. never been here. We're before, just like so. a public whatever, yeah. yeah. Well, and if, if, if we decide to have a walkable meeting, maybe that would be a good way to attract new people. We want more people's voices in this, right? Yep. Yeah, we could even invite the people from Absolutely. the Hamlet to walk with us. We should so invite we the historic Ithaca people to walk with us, see what they have to say. <laughs> well, but, but if, if we invited it, the Hamlet people, we would hear their opinions on mm -hmm. what they thought about what, you know, what we're proposing for the Hamlet. Yeah, maybe we put something on their door. We could walk and put something on their doors. <laughs> I don't know. Just say, hey, call us. We want to know what you think. You could walk down the street as a group. They're going to wonder who's that group. I know, exactly. right? Exactly. Get arrested. <laughs> well, every time we go by a house, we could knock and invite them to come with us. Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> that's true. So David and Nancy, you're going to try to figure out something and let us all know about a time to walk? Yeah, yeah. like what's a good time? Like uh, late afternoon, like dinner after dinner, like six, five or it six? It took us a couple of hours to walk with Jason, just about half a mile or so. Right. So, Weekend, weekends may make more sense because there's so many meetings weekend, during the week. Yeah. yeah, rush hour would not be a good time. I was thinking the same thing, Russ. Yeah, it, it's kind of loud sometimes around that time. And dangerous. Yeah. Maybe a Sunday I'll walk. I'll tell you why people don't go 40 miles an hour on that road. Well, because it's in a passing zone. People are passing as they're coming into the, the core area. Yeah. Um, Unfortunately, um, I'll be out of town, Nancy, from probably next Wednesday until the following um so about 10 days so i mean i could do something before or after and i'd really like to i think it's a great idea yeah you have a lot of I mean, knowledge you know, about we could do bike we could bike <laughs> that's a good idea too mm -hmm. all right well thanks yeah thank you everybody thanks, everyone have thank a good you, weekend thank, thank you david together the meeting and thanks everyone bye bye Hi. Good night, all.